Napey. I'm studying for a level three diploma in film and television, currently doing my final major project, creating a short <laughs> horror film released in two parts called Celestial. As part of my skill share and part of my actual diploma, uh, I'm trying to get in contact with many industry professionals and as many contacts as I can get. So today I'm joined with the award-winning and BAFTA-nominated editor, Mick Audley. Welcome. How are you? Very good. Yeah, hard at work, but it's good to see you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mick has edited such films as 12 Monkeys, Harry Potter and Murder on the Orient Express and worked with directors such as Mike Newell and Kenneth Branagh, which is absolutely brilliant. So as I said, it's a real honour to talk to you. Um, I've just got a couple of questions just to talk to you, to let people see who you are, what you do, and then I'll sort of incorporate that into the film I'm making at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to head on right into it. Go so, for it. Uh, how did you get into uh, uh, editing and the film industry itself? Uh, I did go to a film school. Um, initially, before that, I went to uh, art school because I was interested in animation, actually. Right. And uh, the graphic side of, uh, of um, filmmaking, if you like, in the form of animation. Mm. And then I went to a film school because I realized that animation was um, a, a rather lonely business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I wanted to do something that was a bit more collaborative. Right, yeah. So, so far, animation, I, I, I applied to what was then one of the few film schools in Britain, which was the uh, Royal College of Art Film School. All right. This is the late 60s yeah. and early 70s. And I, I did an MA course there. But the one thing I never did was to do any editing. Oh, right. <laughs> I, uh, I did every other discipline um, and ended up doing quite a lot of uh, sound recording because I had, uh, you know, interest as a, an amateur musician right. with sound. Oh. And, and, and nobody wanted to do sound because it, was, it wasn't very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be directors or camera people. Yeah. So yeah. I ended up in the sound department uh, a, a lot right. uh, and, and, and cutting sound for films, but not actually picture. Yeah. And when I left the uh, film school, I needed a job quite badly and I gravitated towards what was the Pr British Film Institute Production Board, right. uh, where they were making feature films, uh, you know, uh, usually on 60 mil. Mm. And um, I, by chance, to cut a long story short, I ended up uh, sound editing and what well, recording and sound editing a version of King Lear. Uh, and but there was nobody to cut that film, and I ended up sort of being thrown into cutting it by default. And as soon as I started, I thought, "Oh, this is what I'd like to do." So it was yeah. a sort of light bulb moment. So that's yeah. how it worked for me. But it was it was purely by accident. There was no design in this other than desperately needing a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Um, so when was the time that you sort of in, in editing, whether it was the sound editing or cutting films, when did you experience like a, a very technical challenge? Was it with sort of the bigger blockbuster like Harry Potter and the Murder on the Orient Express? Or was it any smaller projects? I think uh, the advancement of um, the... Uh, visual effects side of filmmaking. I mean, obviously changing from film to, to digital non-linear editing was a bit of a jump. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was, I was very well looked after through that transition by my colleagues and assistants who, you know, and understood that we had come from a different era, if you like, of filmmaking, literally chopping bits of plastic together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was challenging, but also very exciting mm. um, because I realized that you could, your methods would change very radically. Yeah, you could think you could think very directly from your your perception of the material into making something without the physics in between. You know, yeah. and so the, the comparison would be handwriting and, and word processing. Yeah. So, and the fact that you could use multi-track audio and things like that in, in a first pass was 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 fantastic. So right. that was very exciting. It, it was challenging. Yeah. Uh, and I, I did have friends at that time who didn't make that crossover. Um, I think after that, perhaps, yes, the visual effects side of that dominates now uh, is also very challenging from a, from a film editor's point of view, because you, you're having to dictate lengths of shots and, and rhythms of shots yeah. that haven't got all the visual content in them. In right. fact, they may, have, they may have none of it in at the point where you have to commit 
those what we call plates, the things that should receive the additional material. Yeah. And they have to be worked out to length. So you're getting backgrounds, if you like, and, and not the actual perhaps subject. So it's very hard to assess how all that's going to work. And usually when you see it, you'd like to do it all differently because it, it looked very different. But then it's too late because it's been made. And, uh, it's very hard to wriggle out of that stuff. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, blimey. Right. Um, how do you... So sort of on the, on the subject of that, how do you approach each film? Because as I say, it's not exactly... Uh, an easy thing to go into or walk in the park, let's say. So how do you sort of approach each film? Well, uh, I'm a great believer in, in studying the screenplay in, in fine detail. Uh, these things change, obviously, and they radically uh, transform in the process of going from page to screen. Yeah. But for me, the protection, uh, if there is one to be had when you start, and it's always nerve-wracking, I can assure you, yeah, <laughs> that doesn't go away with years or age. <laughs> In fact, it probably gets worse. I would say. Oh right. Um, is um, you you know too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that you know nothing. Yeah. Um, um, I think so. The protection for me is 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 to do a very careful study of the screenplay in yeah. detail, so that you understand all the pieces that come in because films are shot in the most extraordinary order, you know, not very seldom in, the, in screen order. Yeah. So the more you understand about the intentions of the, those pieces of film and, and their relevance in the, in the overall story, the more you can see a jigsaw puzzle ahead of time in some sort of shape um, before all the pieces have arrived or been arranged correctly. Right. Um, so for me, for me, understanding it, even if you change your mind, uh, is is of crucial importance and and it sort of protects you because oh I see that's the bit I know that's the bit where that says that I need to know that so yeah. that's that's important so you start to understand the emphasis to contradict all that I have friends who prefer not to work that way so closely to the screenplay and I think that's valid too they just react to what they're given right. I can only speak I can only speak from my own experience and I found it very useful yeah. to um, to understand the dramatic structure of the piece, you know, beginning, middle and end or set up conflict yeah. and resolution. Yeah. And, and, and then to know the intentions of the writing so that you can carry it on in the editing, which is, it, which is if you like, an extension of the writing process just now you're dealing with the actual product yeah. on, on the screen. I was going to say, because I'm just thinking, as you said that, there must be a lot of different sort of structures. You know, you'll have like a narrative structure on one film, you know, depending, as you said, because I know I study at the moment, I think his name is Tordov or Tordov's Theory. So you have, you know, not all films might have sort of like a start, middle and an end. So if I studied, say, Christopher Nolan, let's say, you know, some some films can be very different. So you can imagine, you know, when you come onto a film, it might, could be a little different. Yeah, I mean, the chronology can, can change around. And <clears throat> I think that um, what the, the responses you have to uh, the screenplay are useful to keep in the back of your mind uh, to see if they're replicated later on. You know, you might think, well, God, I was really bored on page 50, you know. Yeah. yeah. So when you, when you get 50 minutes into the film, are you bored, you know? And you think, well, yeah, yeah I am. It's the same thing's happened, but I, I understand why now. So yeah. It, it's that correlation between the page and the screen is very important to me, but yeah. not, not to everybody. And I, you know, everybody yourself included, I'm sure will make up, um, make up your own mind about what works for you and what, yeah. and what doesn't. But all I would say as advice is worth listening to everybody's different ways of doing things. Yeah. Uh, even, even if you reject them, you, yeah. you've learned something, you've learned something. You say, well, that doesn't work for me, but I, Oh, I see. I can do it that way. Cause yeah. a thousand ways to do things. And they're all valid, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, obviously, as I said, you've done a, quite a few projects, let me say, you know, especially when I, said, when I first did the British Film Institute uh, and uh, I was, you know, studying it, writing on my website and I got an email through and they said, we're speaking to an editor. And I thought, oh, that's fantastic. And um, funnily enough, I was actually watching Harry Potter at the time that I got it. And then as he <laughs> said, you know, there's an editor on Harry Potter, Murder on the Orange Express, I thought good grief. I thought that is, that's massive, you know, and it straight away intrigued me from the start. Uh, Cause I think, you know, uh, when you were saying, you know, we're all different, whether it comes to sort of screenwriting, editing and the way we approach certain films, 
it's very different to me because I love to listen and know from these industry professionals um, or people my age and just see how they sort of, what direction they went in. Um, so I'd always been very yeah. interested in that. So I said, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think it, it's very hard and, and, and a caveat to, to that part of um, my entry in the industry was that it, that it was difficult because there was also uh, union issues. You know, you couldn't work on, on feature, like the feature films I'm working on now at that point without, uh, legitimacy in the union and you couldn't get uh, you know the, the, a job unless you had it so you were, you were stuck yeah uh, why BFI and the BBC and places like that there were a few exceptions which is why I gravitated to those because I was legitimate in those things and yeah until I I'd got union status which took a good few years right right yeah um so on, I think I was um, on the subject of sort of my film that I'm making. Uh, I'm just, as I said, I'm creating a short horror film for my final major project uh, called Celestial. Um, and uh, obviously I've just got to take all the techniques and everything I've studied over the last two years to finally create this one big film. Um, it's not what I'd actually intended to make in the end. Obviously COVID has really put a couple of things on hold, um, but really looking forward to making this. So I just wanted to talk to you, obviously, when I edit my films, um, how do you know when you're, when, when you're happy with your edit? Is it sort of after a screening with a director? Is it, is it sort of like a, a moment where it comes to the end of an edit and you go, that's the one? Or is it, you know, sort of a process of sort of like, ah, let's try that again, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I think there's always a lot of... Um you know, it's the nature of editing films that there's trial and error. Yeah. Um, and the trial and error is sort of set against uh, responses of the audience uh, on big films that, you know, we actually show them, you know, pre-COVID, as it were, to, to a cinema full of people, yeah. which is where the scales drop from your eyes and you think, oh, my goodness, this isn't, this isn't working or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you can get that same experience, as you probably know, Connor, from just showing something to a friend or a family yeah. and sitting with them and you think, well, this isn't going so great or this is going great. Yeah. Uh, they don't need to open their mouths. You just sense it. It's a weird thing. Yeah. So I think the, the process of, of finalizing editorial work is complicated. It's a mixture of what you believe is right for the film yourself and also the approval uh, from the people you know you work for because we're employees of directors who are indeed employees of producers yeah and the audience and often the schedule oh that's it we've run out of time there's no yeah. more money you know <laughs> so you have to sort of uh, steer your way through those mm. factors but for me usually I, I the, the best way I can put it is where you look at the film and you feel that there's nothing that you need to interfere with it's starting to live in its own right Mm. And it seems to have settled and be alive in its own way without you interfering with it. Yeah. Um, and when you get that feeling, it's usually getting to the point where it's done. Yeah. But you could, can of course, edit a film forever, you know. But there's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said, when you God said forbid... that, trial and error, that's, that's exactly how I, I see it. You know, I said, that's definitely... Or, or, or error and error, as I said. Yeah. Continuous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, no, I said, I, I, I think the... Uh, one of the reasons that I found that I was really interested in film. Um, it's been a good five, I think it's been five, six years now, I've actually been interested in sort of the filmmaking side of it was uh, a couple projects as I was coming to the end of secondary school and starting college. Uh, as you said, I'm, I'm always, you know, editing, editing until I am happy with something. And even after a couple months, you know, I've looked back at some of my old little, you know, short films and think, you know, what was I thinking at that time? You know, that's, you know, I've got to do this. Um, but there's been some times with edits where I've, I've put something together or when I come up with an initial idea for a film and sort of, you know, it keeps on expanding. Once someone's happy with that, I made a short film called The Quarantine Couple. And there was this one scene that I thought that would be a really good comedic scene. And once I got reviews from it from family and that, that was the one thing that stood out to them. And that to me was like, I'm glad I got that across. I'm glad that that worked and it had an effect on them. So that's what I made me realize that I love film and editing and the script writing. It really interested me to create a final piece and go, wow, you know, it's that overwhelming feeling. Get it across. Yeah, it is. It's true. When you get it across to the audience. 
Yeah, that's yeah. What, that's what it's all about. You're making films not for yourself as such, but yeah. to, to, to deliver an experience. Oh, and all of the yeah. work we do is rather like being a conductor of an orchestra and conducting yeah. the pieces in the right, right way. Yeah. No, I said definitely. That's, I've always loved to, to show people because that's, again, I love films because it's an immersive experience. It's to sort of sometimes get away from life or something and just be immersed in this universe, you know, in this story. Um, so no, that, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, let me just have a look here. What advice do you have for, say, myself, young filmmakers who are trying to get into the industry or who are studying at the moment, depending on what pathways they get down, what advice would you give them? Look at films of all uh, shapes and sizes that, are, that interest you, even the ones, particularly perhaps the genres and, and things which don't interest you, because there's always something to be learned about the way stories are told yeah i think constantly look at uh, uh, other movies at fi finished films to see how they do things to see how stories are told you know um and try and understand them maybe look at them a number of times look at foreign language films even if you have you know that's difficult dealing with uh subtitling or whatever but it's best to break outside of your comfort zone in looking at what because you you always will learn something and then keep on being a practitioner yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it's quite useful to learn how to talk about film problems and film issues, here, particularly that, that are experienced in the cutting room. You know, yeah. understanding why things work, what, what's an editorial problem and what's a writing problem, for example. Um, you know, there's a big difference. Mm. Um, and sort of understanding how performances can be shaped and work, uh, again, by looking at how, how things are presented, you know. In other words, do you show certain bits of information or do you imply them? You know, is it better not to show things and, set, and so on? There are the thousand billion things going on at any given moment, yeah. which would, have, would affect the way you present your own work. And that's the reason why one never stops learning because it's, it's always a unique film that you're making that no one is the same, even if it's a copy of something else, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be different. Yeah. So um, I think that's the advice and um, do as you're doing, you know, try and talk to people perhaps like myself or, or of all pra of all of the practitioner skills. Yeah. Uh, because you will, you will always learn, learn something. And um, uh be open-minded. I don't get stuck in one genre or don't think of it as, as being genre ridden. Mm. Um, you know, if you're an editor, you, you should be, you're not somebody who just does this or just does that. You do, you make movies, you're yeah. an editor to make films, you know, yeah. not just uh, as a, as a director would, you wouldn't just say, well, I just do comedy. Or I just do. No, I mean, it, they're all interrelated and they're all have factions of each other in them. Yeah. You know, like comedy has a lot of tragedy in it and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think just keep a very broad outlook and listen to what people have got to say, but primarily look at other films and see how they do even the most simple things. It may not always work for you, but you think, well, that didn't work because, that, oh, okay, well, that, I've learned something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. It's honestly been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, and hearing about everything, it really has helped. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I hope I've been of help to you. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much. Good luck.